2 Corinthians chapter 5, in verse 13, For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. And if we are of sound mind, it is for you. That's the people of God. For the love of Christ controls us, having concluded this, that one died for all, therefore all died. What is Paul saying? What are some of the things that governs his life as a Christian? It's God. A Godward mindset that what he does, he truly longs to do it for God. Now let me ask you a question. The life that you live, the lifestyle in which you walk, is it for God? If we were to open up the heart chamber that holds the motivation, would we see that you really are doing what you do for God? Think, discern, examine. Is it out of love for Him and out of love for His people? Verse 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creature in your innermost being. Are you a new creature with new desires? Christianity is not picking up a book and finding all these new principles to live by. It's just religion. It's just rule keeping. It's just Phariseeism. Is your life marked by worship? Not just, I've got to worship. Not just, I've got to do this, a forced thing, a disciplined thing, a thing I must make myself do. Even though at times we must crucify the flesh, we must discipline ourselves and we must worship. But the true believer, their life will be marked by worship. Not having to worship, but desiring to worship. Now surrender, repent, believe the gospel, turn away from your wickedness and your worldliness and your playing church and trust in Christ who is mighty to save. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Amen, amen. God bless you, family. God is your brother, DJ Sam Rock, a.k.a. Mr. Sam Lopez, a.k.a. just your brother in the Lord, a.k.a. lover of Jesus, a.k.a. man of God. Amen. And I'm just trying to get this uh, stand out of your way so that way it won't be a uh, distraction because I know I get distracted easily. And you know that by now, if you've been following me, you know I get distracted easily. But I'm praying that there's no distraction today. I'm praying that this morning devotion will really be a blessing to you. On my way in my morning, I do like a uh, what we call in the rideshare industry a cash call. And I was driving uh, a young lady to school this morning, and we listened to Sirius XM on my on my phone app, and I heard quick testimony of a radio DJ, something that I hold dear because I do the same thing online. And he was sharing that he's going through a lot and he's shared it public. His name is Doug and he's on The Message. It's called The Message on Sirius, Sirius XM. And he was sharing that early in his marriage, his wife got diagnosed with type one diabetes and the last 10 days, she was in ICU. She just got out and he was praising God for that. And then he said a day after she was out, a day or so after she was out, he gets a phone call from the police and the police told him that he had to come to his mother's house because his mother had locked herself out of the house and tried to get in and the alarm system set off and everything. So when he goes over there, he finds out and realizes that his mom now has a touch of dementia, uh, a mental disease and she had to be brought into the hospital so for psychiatric evaluation and as he takes his mom to the hospital they tell him that he cannot see her until the evaluation is done so he's going through a lot so you can hear it in his voice and i could feel his pain and for one second i almost started crying because i could feel his pain on the other end of that microphone and he basically said, listen, I'm going through a lot and I feel overwhelmed. He said, this is public on, on the radio. This morning I heard it and he was like, can you just pray? Just pray, he said, just pray. So that's one way I know for sure that I'm alive in Christ when I could feel a brother or sister's pain in the Lord. Amen. And I could feel that. And it's like I almost owned that pain. I almost felt what he felt. 
you know, for a quick second. And I just started praying in the spirit. I prayed it out. I didn't pray out loud out of my mouth because I didn't want to um, scare the, the young lady I was with <laughs> and be like, what, what is going on with this guy? But I started praying in my mind. And I know God hears my prayers even through your mind. Amen. So today, the topic of this morning's devotional um, could be a little touchy to some, um, enlightening to others, um, crazy to others. It could be, it could go either direction. But I'm, I'm trusting God. I'm trusting the Lord that this devotion that he brought to my mind and, and brought by way of Holy Spirit God would touch those. So are you spiritually dead? The question is. And how can you tell? How can you tell if you're spiritually dead or not? You may be surprised to find out if you are or if you're not. Amen. On this morning's devotional with Brother DJ Sandrock. God bless you, Sister Jill. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. Amen. Listen, uh, I'm going to give you a minute to share this with all the friends that you can in a minute. But let's pray first because I know um, a topic like this and a morning devotion like this can really be pressing to some, like I said, and embraced by many and rejected by many. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that this morning devotional will be unto you first and foremost as Lord and Savior, as living God. I pray, Lord God, that you would touch every single viewer right now in the name of Jesus. I ask you to send arcing angels, ministering angels, warring angels, arcing angels, amen, that will go to encamp around all those who love you, Lord Jesus. And I'm one of those who love you. I pray, Lord God, the love of the Lord, the love of the Lord Jesus Christ will be evident in this morning devotional that no weapon forced against anyone, no distraction against anyone right now will be able to prosper. I pray supernatural increase. I pray health, strength, protection to every single viewer and not only them, but as a contact to them and their family that they will all be blessed. And those who are not saved, that they will be saved today in the name of Jesus. I pray all of this by faith, knowing that you're able and you're willing and your word is true in the name of Jesus. I pray this by faith. Amen. Listen, I'm going to give you a minute to share this with as many friends as you can, and I'll be right back with the morning devotional. Amen. Thank you for sharing, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. Thank you for sharing with this video. Today, we're going to be talking about, are you spiritually dead? This is the question out of Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10 on today's morning devotional. Listen, this question right here, it will rock your paradigm, will take your mind to a place where you'll be like, see this, see this image? You know, none of this makes sense to me. You know, I used to be that skeleton trying to read naturally a supernatural book amen i was naturally trying to read a supernatural book and it didn't work the book right here that and the scripture right here that i learned is from early on in my faith amen and i'm still learning i don't have it all together is this right here found in first corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 where it says the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of god so you ever wonder why, if you ever wonder why people, you could read scripture to people, you could show them in the Bible where this, this is and where that is, and you look at them and they're not getting it. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 2, 14, the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are not spiritually discerned. So don't get mad. I can't get mad at a person, a brother or sister 
that I'm trying to explain the gospel to, that I'm reading scripture and bringing them the word, and they're looking at me like I'm crazy. Like everything they're hearing from my mouth is foolish. Right now, somebody's watching this and they're saying, that's foolishness, it's not true, Jesus is not God. The, the Bible was, you know, was a construct, it's created to control people, and this, that, and the third. Listen, um, <laughs> because they're not spiritually discerned, the Bible says, amen. And I was once that person, so I'm not passing judgment, I'm pointing fingers. I literally, every now and then, um, back in the day, I had a best friend. He was a Jehovah Witness, um, you know, by family, or I don't know, because he used to hang out with us. But we used to compare the the Christian Bible when I was a so-called Catholic, because I, I wasn't really a Catholic either. But I had a Catholic Bible, and we would compare that with the Jehovah Witness Bible. I think it's called the New World Translation or the World Translation. I forgot what it's called. And word for word, we used to go and say, no, that's not true. That's not true. This Bible says this, and this Bible says that. And remember, the, the Catholic Bible has extra books called the Apocrypha. And, you know, my Jehovah's Witness friend was like, nah, that's that's created by, you know, men. That's not true. So we used to compare. And I don't know about him, but I know about me. I used to look at the scripture spiritually dead, and I was like, um, this is not making any sense to me. I can't figure this out. We read the scripture. Why? So I would never be able to point fingers at anybody that's spiritually dead or not spiritually discerned. And I'm trying to present the scriptures to them and they're looking at me like I'm foolish because I was that person at one point as well. Amen. Yes, Lord, hear our prayer. Amen, Joe. Thank you. Amen. So, and also I have another scripture to back it up. And this book right here is, is what, this is my 40-day devotional. Somebody, I think my wife, I forgot who gave me this book, but they know I'm, I'm big into Star Wars. Amen. I don't know if that's good or bad. So I'm not uh, condoning Star Wars watchers or so for you to, it's called The Real Force. And it's by um, Paul Kent. You could go pick that up on Amazon. Or if you send any donation of $20 or more to me, Amen. I'll send you the book myself personally. And not only will you get the book, but you'll be helping support this ministry as well. Amen. So that'll be a blessing. You could send that donation to my cash app on the screen or you can send it. Um, let's see. There's different ways to send it. PayPal.me, DJ Samrock forward slash. Amen. If you want this devotional or you could just go to Amazon and get it yourself. Amen. Um, it's a 40 day devotional. Those who are into Star Wars. Uh, I'm a Star Wars head. I don't know if that's good or bad. Like I'm saying, I'm not endorsing Star Wars or anything like that because I know it's deeply rooted in Eastern religion and mysticism and all that stuff. So, you know, you have to be prepared to see things like that on the screen. Um, so you have to use discernment. I'm not saying go watch the Star Wars saga or whatever. I'm just saying this morning devotional was inspired by way of Holy Spirit, God, first and foremost. And I kept on looking at this. It was next on the nightstand. Um, and then I put it on my table next to my sofa and I, I was looking at it today and God was sharing from what the brother said this morning on the radio. Then I was, you know, soaking that in and hearing from God. And then he brought me to, um, the spiritually dead question, you know, are you spiritually dead? And then, you know, Lord, the God, God, the God that I serve is amazing. Cause then I opened this up and it goes to, uh, day 10 out of this 40 day and basically there's a quote here from obi-wan kenobi you know uh it's from star wars a new hope it goes who's the more foolish the fool or the fool who follows him all right that's a great question right who's who's the more foolish because people say we're foolish for following jesus but who's the more foolish it's just a question obi-wan kenobi asked the question <laughs> don't don't get mad at me amen so Ephesians chapter 2, let's read it from verses 1 to 10. Ephesians chapter 2, and you he made alive, talking to us, he made alive, who are dead, who were dead, excuse me, who were dead, repeat, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Verse 2, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, not the sons of obedience, but the sons of disobedience. Verse three, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves 
in the lust of our flesh. I speak about that a lot. If you follow me, you know about that. The lust of our flesh and of the mind and we're by nature children of wrath. In the natural man, we are naturally children of wrath just as the others. Like I said, we can't point fingers. I can't point fingers because I was once this person that's being described in the scriptures. Verse four, but God, repeat that, but God, say that, but God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. You can reference that with Romans chapter 10, verse 12. Take that and couple that with this scripture. Verse five, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. How? By grace, you have been saved. By grace, I've been saved. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Verse seven, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Again, the revelation of who Jesus is to a fallen man to a natural man that I once was, that I once was. Amen? It's crazy, right? Let's keep on going. Verse 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God. I can't boast about anything other than Jesus saving me. I can't boast about anything I have. I can't boast about any accomplishments. I can't boast about anything. All I can boast about is Jesus Christ and what he did in my life and what I know he can do in your life as well. Verse nine, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And you could couple that with Romans chapter 3, 27 and Romans chapter 11, verse six. You could put that together as a because the word confirms itself. Amen. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, not for bad works. We're created for good works in which Christ Jesus um, prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We should walk in what God has already prepared for us. So I don't know if you if you're not getting this and you're saying this is foolishness. Um, let me give you a quick idea of this question. Are you spiritually dead? The answer to you would be yes, you're spiritually dead. If this is foolishness to you, the Bible said it, we read it, it's scripture. It's not me throwing shots, taking shots, subs or anything like that. No, I'm not doing that. Again, let me repeat this. I, Sam, DJ Sam Rock was once described, the way this is described, I was once that person who was dead, who was foolish, who was all of that. You know, I couldn't discern. I, I would read the Bible before Jesus and I would look at it and it would just, I couldn't wrap my mind about around anything, especially about his love, especially about his grace, his mercy, especially about him dying for the whole world. An innocent man dying for a bunch of criminal people like me, a bunch of sinners. Why would Jesus do that? Like, and I was, I used to always look at the scriptures before Jesus saved me, and I'd be like, "Yeah, okay, there's, there's no way." And why would He do that? It doesn't make any sense. It was foolishness to me because I was perishing, I was dying in sin, I was dying, dying. Right? Jesus comes, rescues me by His grace and mercy. And now I'm alive, living. Before I was dying, dying. Now I'm alive, living. If that makes any sense. Amen? Because God is good in all his ways. There's no, there's no mistake if you jumped on this live right now and you're going through something specifically to your life is being threatened, is being challenged. Your faith even might be being challenged right now. Like the man that I heard this morning, his wife early on as they got married was diagnosed with type one diabetes. She just was in the ICU for 10 days, gets out. Then he says, I guess he gets a phone call a day or so later after he's rejoicing the fact that his wife is home, gets a phone call from the police. Now his mom was up in age. He said, uh, locked herself out of the house, tried to get in the house, sets off her alarm. Police are there. And now she's in a psychiatric ward. They're going to do a, an evaluation on her. And on top of it all, he can't go see her until the evaluation is done. So he's going through it. A radio um, host, you know, radio DJ. And that's how I hold that dear because I do that same thing online. And he's asking his listeners for a prayer. Amen. 
You might be that person, something similar. And he said, he said this, he says, I know I'm not alone. Amen. He's using discernment. He's using God's spirit because he knows that he's not alone when he's going through it. And he felt overwhelmed. Amen. Like I, I could feel his pain. Sometimes we just have to be a person on the other end listening and feeling what the other person is saying. So that way we could take it to the Lord, take it to the Father in prayer. Although they might not even hear our prayer. You know, I know people that I pray for all the time. They don't even hear my prayer. It doesn't matter. God hears my prayer. And if God hears my prayer, amen, I'm expecting and I'm hoping and I'm trusting that God will do something, you know, this, you know, push, pray until something happens. You ever heard that? I, I'm, I'm a believer in that. I'm praying and praying and praying until I see something happening because I know the, the God who I'm praying to, he's alive, he's real, he's, he's alive. Amen. So let's, let's go back to the title and let's discuss this a little bit more. Our... We spiritually dead. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. So if you see this image, you see like, you know, this was me, a skeleton reading uh, a dead person reading a book that's alive. It didn't make any sense to me. It didn't make any sense to me. Amen. So are you spiritually dead? You'll be surprised by the answer. And, and it might be no. You just might be questioning things you might just be going through life just like everybody else is going through life it doesn't mean that you're spiritually dead if you're questioning things of god it doesn't mean that you're spiritually dead if you pick up the scripture and you don't understand everything because i could guarantee you that everybody out there right now doesn't know everything about what's in here the scriptures i could guarantee you that there's mysteries in the scriptures that we, if you were with me yesterday the secrets that jesus will reveal when he's ready to reveal it. Amen. There's secrets that he's going to reveal to everybody so everybody can see what all the secrets were. He he says he's going to make it known to all the secrets that the things that we don't know in the scriptures. And you know, it's all good. Study the word, of course. I would I would suggest that to everybody. Study the word of God daily. If you're a skeptic, if you don't believe, study the word of God. Until you see something, until God reveals something to you. You know, I don't know if you noticed or not, but our God that we serve as Christians, Christ followers, is an invisible God. You know, so we can't, you know, go somewhere and see him physically. But how do we see God? We see God through his word. How do we hear from God? We hear from God through his word. How do we understand God? We understand God through his word. How do we meet, read God's mind? Well, he left his mind in the word of God. Some of it, not all of it. Amen. His God is bigger than the 66 book Bible. He's bigger than that. Amen. But he, le he, left up en he left us enough information to see his glory, to know about the gospel message and his word. So that's not the issue. If, do we have enough information? I believe we do. I got saved with very little information about Jesus Christ. I got saved by messengers he was sending my way. And then and it wasn't only Christian messengers. I had all kind of religious people come into my house. I had Mormons coming, Jehovah Witness coming, uh, Christians coming, you know, uh, Islam people used to talk to used to talk to me about Allah. So it's not that I, you know, was just zeroed in with Christians alone. Everybody that had uh, a purpose in life that they felt that they had to reveal their purpose to me or enlighten me with their religion they used to come and talk to me and so i could have i could have went crazy trying to figure out what was real what was not so you know what i cut the chase i'm not i'm dumb but not that dumb you know what i mean i said let me cut to the chase if this god of the christians is the real god you know what this is going to be easy to find out if this is true or not and i did this i just challenged god I'm not, I don't suggest you challenge God, but this is my testimony. I challenge God and ask him, okay, if you're real, come and change me. Because I know for sure who I am right now and what I'm doing right now. If you could change that, and not only that, but change me by the next day when I wake up, then we're going to see if you're real or not. And I, I, that's, I guarantee you that. <laughs> I promise you that's what I said. And I was drunk and high, by the way. And this was way back in the year 2001. I don't suggest that anybody challenge God. I'm just saying, sharing my testimony. I was spiritually dead because when I would try to understand the things of God, it wasn't happening. When I would try to read his word, I was like, this is all gibberish. It was foolishness. When somebody would come and preach the gospel to me, I would look at them like, yeah, okay, 
you're a fool. It was foolishness because I was perishing. Brother Gino, God bless you. Generally asking, would it be the same if someone is spiritually dead as opposed to spiritually dying? How could someone determine where they are if that was, I'm sorry, let me, if I gotta change the settings to this, uh, to determine where they are if that was the case? Amen. Good, good question. So, generally asking, would it be the same as someone spiritually dead opposed to spiritually dying? Good question. In Genesis, and this is generally, I can't be specific unless God reveals something specific to a specific person through his spirit. But in Genesis, if you remember in the book of the beginnings, Genesis, um, when they were given everything, you know, Adam, all he had to do was tend the garden. He didn't have to grow nothing. Things were already being grown. Animals were already there. He just had to name the animals, till the ground and all that. Then God puts him to sleep. A man and creates woman out of his womb. So basically, they had everything. They had life and they were alive living. But God said, listen, if you touch that tree, the only tree in the garden, just that one tree, uh, then you will die dying. In other words, then you will not only die physically for disobeying God, but you will die spiritually for disobeying God, if that makes any sense. So we, we were born into this world, right? Born bent to hell like we were born into sin because of what adam and eve did disobedience kicked them out of the perfect garden remember and now there's an angel of the lord that does not allow anybody back in there and so jesus comes back cracks the sky opens up the sky and comes back to restore everything to its purpose to his original plan so if you're dying spiritually um i don't know if that is possible but i know if this is possible that you could be spiritually dead Dying spiritually means you have the spirit of God and then that spirit is dying. I don't think, and hopefully I'm saying this right um, or answering your question right. I don't think that's possible, but I do believe that to be spiritually dead is possible because disobeying God, rejecting Jesus, um, according to Genesis and the fall of man, the whole um, story how it panned out because they disobeyed. They were deceived. So we can't point fingers at Adam and Eve. They were deceived. The deceiver was in the garden. But the deceiver was cursed because God cursed that serpent. But listen, God said you can do anything in this garden. You can touch everything except for that tree um, because, you know, that's restricted. So guess what? They touched the thing that was restricted. And now God said you're going to be you're going to die dying. So you're going to die in the natural. You're going to die in a, in a spirit because of disobedience of God. And the Bible also says, you know, you don't have to fear a man. Just fear God, the one who could, right, give life or death to your body and your soul and your spirit. Only God could kill a spirit in us. But a dying spirit, I don't know, but I know spiritually dead, yes, it's possible. So I hope I answered that correctly, Gino. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. So spiritually dying, how could someone determine where they are, you know? Yeah, so good question. Spiritually dead as opposed to spiritually dying. That's a great question. Amen. Thank you for that question. Hopefully I tackled it in some way or manner that made some kind of sense. If not, amen, I could study it out more and we could talk more about it. Amen. God bless you. And if anybody else has any questions, comments, concerns that you want to share publicly, you could do it right here on the live and I'll try my best. Amen. By way of um, what I understand of what God. But remember, I can't beat myself up for not understanding everything in the scriptures because I'm not alone in that. I know we will not ever understand um, that's why we have all eternity to God's going to reveal himself in different facets and fits different ways for all eternity on the other side of this spectrum of eternity, right? So God is good. So are you spiritually dead? And one of the ways you could tell, let's get to some more scriptures here, is 1 Corinthians 2.14. We read that that's human beings truly being in the natural, trying to understand Jesus in the natural. How could you understand naturally something or someone who is supernatural? Amen. Um, natural men or women are often proudly, they often proudly believe, right, that they're being their own person. You know, I'm my own person. You know, you ever heard somebody say that? You know, I'm only human. You ever heard somebody say that? As if that's something to be degradable. Like, I'm only human. What does that mean? If you're human, that's an amazing thing. You were created in the image of Almighty God. 
So when somebody says, I'm only human, I used to say this too. I stopped saying it because of some things that I learned in the scripture. But being only human is not a downplay at, on a, by any means. Being human means you're created in the image of God, but are really conformed to the patterns of this world. So when you're saying, I'm only human, are you saying you conforming to the patterns of this world? Romans chapter 12, verse 2, you can read that. Um, we need to be transformed and renew, uh, renewing of our mind and being transformed, not following the patterns of this world. To see if you're spiritually dead, you could be like the attack of the clones going back to Star Wars. In the attack of the clones, there were these, these men and women made. They were cloned to be just the same. And they were uh, Django Fett. You know, it doesn't matter if you know the characters. But he was a, a bounty hunter. And they created these clones after this bounty hunter. Only thing that was a little different than the bounty hunter is that these clones were more receptive to commands. So they would do more of what the commander would say without resisting, right? Um, so they were clones. You know, the world, sadly to say, there's a lot of clones out here right now. Everybody wants to do everything everybody else is doing. That's that's a way of being cloned. That's the way of being cloned. That's why I love Christians. I love Christianity because although we all look different, we serve the same God, have the same faith, right? Same Holy Spirit, same gospel. Although we have all that same, but God says, you don't have to be clones. We could be different in what we, who we are as long as we follow and we know that we're members of one body. Amen. So the attack of the clones, they, they made all these soldiers um, to be the same. They look kind of the same. They act the same. Um, but then if you if you know the saga of Star Wars, some of them started breaking out of this. Said, Why am I? Because some of them realize <clears throat> they have a conscience. And that conscience, we call that <clears throat> the law of God that's written on our hearts. And I don't know why I'm losing my voice. Let me take something to drink here. Refreshing like yesterday, right? Hold on. Sorry. So what's that pattern that these clones had? They were following after everything that they were being told and everybody was doing pretty much the same thing. So the sameness, you know, that could be like dreary. It could be the sameness of people. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a do this. I'm going to turn up. I'm going to smoke. I'm going to drink. You know, I'm going to do what I want to do. Everybody else is doing it, so I'm going to be a clone. Instead of being 100% individual and unique, a lot of people rather be clones, hide out with other clones, so that way the sameness, they, they have that kind of like bond in the sameness. To me, that's lame. I lived that lame life before. I did everything everybody else did. I tried to fit in with everybody else. And something in my conscience was saying, you know, you don't have to do everything everybody else is doing. You don't have to be the same just like everybody else. You know, always my conscience would always tell me that. I didn't know what it all meant until I got saved. I said, oh, that's what it was. The attack of the clones, I was resisting that. I wasn't going to be a clone, you know, or a clown, whatever, however you want to say it, right? So in, in devotional here, 2 Corinthians 3.18, we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. So if you're spiritually dead, um, a clue to that would be that whatever you're hearing now, whatever you're hearing now, actually, um, you're going to be like, nah, I don't think that's right. Nah, um, and I'm not saying disagreeing with what I'm saying or the scriptures means that you're spiritually dead. I mean, when you hear the word of God being spoken out and something about it, it's not it's not landing in the right places in your heart. You're 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 expelling everything. You're trying to take everything that you're hearing and, and throw it out. You know, you know, you're covering your ears type of thing. You're covering your eyes type of thing. But then you're looking at another um, place. You're looking at what the world is doing and their pattern and you feel like some kind of fulfillment. We're doing drugs, premarital sex, hanging out, cursing, swearing, um, crime life, party life, gang life, whatever the situation may be, and you're more receptive to those things, um, then I would challenge you to see if you're spiritually dead or not. Amen. So you'll be surprised. A lot of people that even go to church, and I was mentioning this, I think, yesterday, um, I see it all the time. They come to a fire, Holy Ghost filled service, and they look like they're spiritually dead. Uh, they don't, no reaction at all, no um, response, no interaction, no lifting of hands, no speaking out of the mouth. But they will look at 
the other people were spiritually dead and they would relate and they would be more receptive to those people. And I see it all the time. And it's crazy, sad, but in our natural way of living, that's the way it's going to be. But in a supernatural way of living, then you'll start receiving what the Word of God is saying over your life. Then you'll be activated. You'll be alive in Christ. You'll be alive in, alive in the things of God. Amen. And you'll just keep on moving from there. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 12, and in verse 20 and 21, um, the Bible basically says, Occasionally, even ourselves, when we have the behaviors of this prophet Isaiah, right? We, we go... Um, People known for their parties and music and wine, but who have no regard for the deeds of the Lord. You know, people like that, that they'll, they'll do everything, you know, wine and spirits. You ever notice that it says wine and spirits at a liquor store? Why would it say spirits? I know people say, oh, no, that means, you know, you know, wine and alcohol, whatever. I'm saying it's wine and spirits. That's what the sign says. And people known for their partying and all that life. They have no regard, no respect for the work of God's hands over their life or over anybody's life. So they call evil good and they call good evil. And we're living that in our times now in society. Who are wise in their own eyes and clever, more clever than God, more wise than God. That's how they think they are. More clever in their own sight. Who acquit the guilty for a bribe, right? But deny justice to the innocent. Even those who don't know God realize we're a little less than human when we act this way. And that's why some people that are acting up and turn, turned up, they say, yeah, you know, excuse me, man, I'm drunk right now. I had them yesterday. I had these two dudes in my car. The one guy said, you know, I have 34 counts of, of crime on my record. And he was laughing about it. He was so proud of it. And he said, my friend, he only has 13. He needs to catch up with, you know, my record. And I'm like, wow, okay. They were drunk high, you know, they were uh, friendly drunk high, but they were drunk and high. And that lifestyle, that death style, I call it, that's what they know. That's all they know because they're in the natural man. They're following the patterns of the world and they're calling evil good and good evil, you know. So they don't, I couldn't, there's no judgment there, man. I can't point fingers because that's the way I was. Remember that description we found in the scriptures in Ephesians chapter 2? I was that person as well. May not have a criminal record, may not have been, you know, in jail all that time and all that, but I still had the mindset and the pattern of this world. So I can't judge. Amen. The, the external things I can't judge. Thank you for responding and you um, did answer my question. Let me take one step further and get you to take on it. If someone's spiritually dead, then if somebody, I got to change the setting. Something is dead, then it's non-responsive. But if something is dying, then it still has life, but barely. I think I know where you would go. Okay, yeah. So, uh, if something was once alive and is dying, let's see, if something is dying, still, okay, okay, I got you. So, it could be like the prophets of the Old, in the Old Testament. Um, some of them felt that they were all alone, right? And like the prophet Elijah, he, he did great things, and then all of a sudden, you know, killed the, the false prophets and all of a sudden he gets word from this woman that's chasing after him and now he's like running after he did great things god used him to do great miracles signs wonders and he you know did that in the third and he gets a a message that some lady is chasing him so now he's like his faith is going down after he's been all the way in the high mountains the mountaintop experience now his faith is going down now fear came which is the opposite of love Fear came. So he had full spiritual, you know, life. And then it started dwindling down. And then he's now being chased or he's fearful of losing his life after he did everything. God is like looking at him like, really? Then he, th he's, he feels like he's all alone. He says, I know there's only me, you know. And God says, um, no, there's thousands of you out there, at least 7,000. Or, you know, prophets out there, people that he inspired. So inspirationally, you could be um, on, on the mountaintop, and I've been there, the mountaintop, and then something happens in life, and you feel that dwindling, that spiritual life dwindling. But I know there was life there, and I know all I needed was, you know, somebody say clear and pump me up again. So if someone is spiritually dead, then if something is dead, then it's not responsive. Okay, barely. So if you understand what I'm saying, so I would say if something is dying, 
like if a faith in the Lord is dying, then we have to be get some injections of the faith back in our life. <clears throat> and it's not, it's not going to take uh, an evangelist like me saying, talking about it. It's going to take the word of God being read, the word of God being studied, the word of God being declared out of our very own mouths. Amen. Um, I have I have at least, <clears throat> I would say, eight excuses to not believe in God. And that would mean, uh, I think it was, I would say we lost like eight or nine children um, by way of miscarriages and two children being born sick and then dying. So I have, in my natural, I have reasons not to believe in God because he didn't save my children. He didn't do that in the third. So I could sense sometimes when my spirit life is declining, but I can never sense my spirit dying. My spirit in me, I, I think it's impossible for the spirit of God in me to die. Well, actually, I know that according to the scripture. But you could feel a sense of something dwindling, the power leaving, faith leaving, you know, fear coming in and replacing some faith in your life. That's possible. But if something still has a pulse, you know, somebody's dying in their, in their, in their you know, hospital and the first thing they, they check for is a pulse, right? Because they say, if there's still a pulse, there's still a chance. And for every Christian, every Christ follower, if you still have a pulse, that means you still have a chance. So God bless you, Brother Gina. I hope I tackled that. These are good questions. You're trying, you're trying to, you know, throw me under the bus. No, I'm just kidding, man. But it is good questions, man. And that's why I'm a thinking man, a man who's alive in the spirit. Otherwise, spiritual things won't even be, won't even matter to someone who's spiritually dead. That's another clue. Are you spiritually dead? Well, then spiritual things won't won't matter to you, especially when it pertains to God. But when it comes to Wiccan, witchcraft, Santeria, um, you know, voodoo and all that stuff, you might be more receptive to those things. And guess who they worship? They worship the spirit of the dead. Clue. I'm just saying. Are you spiritually dead? These are the things that I knew for my life. I was spiritually dead. I was into occultic things back in the day. Um, Santaria, witchcraft, you know, I was intrigued by voodoo and all that stuff um, because they were worshiping, and I guess I was worshiping at the same time the spirit of the dead, which has no life. Hello. And although it may seem that it has some form of power, but God's power um, wasn't being used in those areas. It was a spirit that was opposed to what God's power was available to do in my life or able to do in my life and in anybody's life as a matter of fact let me read one more scripture and then you know i'm out romans chapter 12 verses 2 and 9 basically it says and this is one of my favorite scriptures in the bible man romans always gets me romans to me is like the road map to christianity right in my life uh, might not matter to you um the book of romans but the book of romans explained so much and answered so many questions when I was a, a young believer and it still answers questions. Look, I, I have never arrived. I don't think I will ever arrive. <laughs> I don't think I will ever arrive until Jesus comes back for me. And then I'll be like, okay, now this all comes full circle. When Jesus cracks the sky and comes for me, it's going to make it full circle. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, by his mercy, that you present your bodies as living sacrifices not dead corpses living sacrifices holy acceptable holy set apart acceptable to god which is your reasonable service so this makes sense if you're if you're in a supernatural man you could reason this out and be like yeah that makes sense the natural man will be like this doesn't make any sense and verse two and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind this is where the battlefield is, the mind, renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And you can only do that when your spirit is alive. Because the spirit is alive and willing. The flesh is weak. The natural man chases everything um, that looks good, smells good, tastes good. They get all they can, can all they get, right? But the spiritual man says, look, my riches are stored in heaven. Although I need stuff here on earth to make things happen, but my riches ultimately are stored in heaven. We're just passing by. We're just like vapors. We're just people who are like on a pilgrimage on this planet as Christians, as Christ followers. But in the meantime, 
You know, the natural man is like so much limited, so limited, right? And my natural way of thinking, I'm going to fail, fail, and fail, fail. I'm not going to win. But in my supernatural man, the Spirit, Holy Spirit in me, I win all the time, man. Over sin, over death, I have victory over those things. Not by anything I did, because in my natural man, I want out. I just want to do whatever I want to do in my natural man. But my supernatural man in me, Holy Spirit God, has the victory over all things that are hurled my way and hurled your way. So am I spiritually dead? Absolutely not. Amen. How do I know? Because this is starting to make sense. And you can only know the spiritual things of God if you have the Spirit of God in you. You can only know the mind of God and the Spirit of God if you have the Spirit of God in you. Amen. This is not no mysticism, no Eastern religion. This is not no occult. This is not anything like that. This is not um, wishful thinking. Amen. Because wishfully, um, and my natural man will wish this wasn't true. Because my natural man says, why do I have to change? That's what my natural man says. Why did I have to change? Why did I have to lose power over Brother Sam and lose power over Sister Jill, lose power over Brother Gino, lose power over all the Christians and Christ followers? The natural man hates the spirit man. The natural man is at war with the spirit man. And guess what? The natural man always loses against the spirit man. Amen. The spirit will never die. Naturally, our, our flesh falls to the ground. Naturally, this body will decay. And, but our spirit man will be in the presence of the Lord. Are you spiritually dead? And if you are, don't you want to be alive? Who wants to be dead? Who wants to be like zombies in this world? Amen. I don't think anybody by choice decided to be a drug addict and look like a zombie and live like a zombie. I don't think anybody in, in, you know wanted to wake up one day as a rapist and start raping women and men. I don't think somebody just woke up one day and just wanted to go and do a killing spree. No, I think what's happening is the natural man has so much control over these people and over their mind and influence them so bad that they go out and do things in the natural that will cause them to do sin, that will cause them to kill, murder, to cause them to lie and cheat because the natural man wants to do all of that. The supernatural man says, nah, uh, I want to break you free from those bondages because that's actually what that is. When you're living in the natural, you're living in the limitations of bondage but when you're in the supernatural and the spirit man is in you and alive you're living in the limitless possibilities and and, and an amazing world that god created for us as christians as christ followers so i'm not talking about a religion i'm talking about a personal relationship with the lord jesus christ are you spiritually dead well ask god ask god you know i don't believe in god well ask him anyway because just because you don't believe in something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And just because I believe, let's make this fair, just because I believe in something doesn't make it exist either. So I'm always making this clear so that way we could be on even ground. So that way I'm not, you know, oh, you know, if you don't trust God, you know, you're wrong. I'm not going to say that. How, why would I say that when I didn't trust God before Jesus came into my life and revealed himself in my life? My, I was spiritually dead before Jesus came into my life and into my heart, into my mind. Amen. I was dead. I was di dead dying, but now I'm alive living. Amen. So I hope you got something from this morning devotional. Remember, this was inspired by the Real Force 40-Day Devotional. If you want to make a contribution to my ministry right here, you can do that by way of, let's see, uh, PayPal right there, DJ Sam Rock. Or you can do that by way of... Cash App. $20 or more, you send this to the ministry right now, I'll send you this book. But you could just go bypass this whole thing. Just go on Amazon, get it yourself. If you're into Star Wars, this will really help you out and will cleanse our um, mindset of the things that we saw in Star Wars, you know, because there's always a battle between, you know, the dark side and the light and the Jedi, you know, the Sith and, you know, and the Jedi. And if you saw the last movie of the saga that just came out, you know what I'm talking about. The Sith, the dark side, the Jedi, you know, it has a redemptive message. You know, I don't want to over spiritualize Star Wars. It's a movie, but it does have a redemptive message. And it, it looks like to me, from what I see in all the Star Wars, that light over overcomes dark all the time. So the Sith and the dark, you know, are mad all the time because they can't win. They can't seem to win. And that's the way the enemy is over your life. He can't seem to win. But if you're spiritually dead, 
you're giving you're giving victory. Not that the enemy has any victory because he's defeated. It's your you might be giving victory to the devil over your life. Amen. But we could change that today. You could ask Jesus to shed the light of Christ upon you. You ask the light of God to be in you. You ask Jesus to forgive you, to help you, to give you a, a post back for his kingdom, for his purpose. Ask God to forgive you for being a sinner and he'll forgive you. Ask him to live in you and he will do that. And confess out of your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God was raised on the third day. Jesus was raised on the third day. The Bible says if you do these things, you will be saved. Not you might be saved, you will be saved. And then if you're spiritually dead, you're going to sense the same thing I sensed or even better. You're going to sense that something came alive in your heart, in your life. When I got saved, literally the next day, I felt my life in me different. I don't know if that makes any sense to somebody because I was spiritually dead. I was dead dying and now I'm alive living. So God bless you. I hope you got something out of this. Amen. And I, I'm just trusting God that it will be testimonies of people who were spiritually dead who became alive in him, alive in Christ. And that's an amazing thing, amazing testimony. So God bless you. Please share this with uh, as many friends as you can um, so that we could get this gospel message out. And like I said before, and I will always say that God is good. So God keep you and the peace of God be upon you. And I'm out of here <clears throat> to the next time. And pray for my voice. I don't know why it's going away. <clears throat> it might be attacking the enemy, but listen, he loses all the time. So, but he's relentless and relentless pursuit of some kind of victory, which he will never ultimately get because he's a, he lost the battle a long time ago, very long time ago. So God bless you. Peace. Blazing Bible studies.